Hey, hey there, sports fans. It's almost time for the annual UA Sports Festival, presenting your host, President Mike. And your guest host for most World Martial Arts tournaments, it's me, Mr. Alonzo. It almost feels like the Olympics back at home. So, Mike, do you think you can explain to me how these games work? Well, I'm glad you asked, Alonzo. All the contestants will be thrown into an arena where they will be competing in a series of events that will rack up their points based on their performance. Who knows what kind of games could be in store for this year? So just be sure that your quirk hits all the right marks. Say, has anyone seen Mr. Satan lately? Usually he'd be more pumped to see something like this. Well, I sure would hate to miss out on an event like this. The crowd is really going crazy over our school's top performing students, Todoroki, Gohan, and Bakugo. Just who will be the first one to go beyond? Well, I sure can't wait to find out. Guess we'll see on Part 9, Bring Your UA Game! There was just one more day before the UA Sports Festival took place. Almost the entire school was getting pretty anxious, even more so after what happened back at the USJ. Students from over classes all gathered to see what the big hubbub was about in Class 1A. Needless to say, these guys were becoming worse than the buzz that Mr. Satan usually had to deal with, although it wouldn't kill for some insight on where his whereabouts right about now. The guy was missing for a few days. He didn't call or leave a message or anything. It was just so very unlike him. The class could really use one of its remedies to get out of a situation like this. It was starting to feel a little claustrophobic in here with all the questions in one sitting. Still recovering from his injuries, Bakugo was in no mood to even humor them. Be it losers! Some of us have places to be away from you! This urged Tetsu Tetsu and Shinzo to throw in their two cents back. Typical! To think for a second any of you would be able to actually fight a real villain. I mean, look at this dude's arm! Probably couldn't last a second. The half-crippled hothead was cursing under his breath, having second thoughts about whether or not he should have taken one of those magical beans. But of course, that wouldn't mean getting help from Deku and especially Golhan. <laughs> he was beyond that. Speaking of said brotherly duo, Golhan found himself still piled under a load of crumbled up papers and scraps of rejected hero names. And even more terrible costume ideas. Uh, don't suppose Yasurozu might have some suggestions? Midoriya, on the other hand, was met with a very determined and serious-looking Todoroki, thinking back to what the other students said in the competition. Hey, Todoroki, what's up? You're not still heated about the payload match, are you? And there's no use in hiding it any longer. What do you mean? From the way that he took that monster out with ease, even when All Might was struggling to hold his own against those villains, Golan was holding back, wasn't he? Especially in our payload training. The head of the half Saiyan now peeked out from his house of endless scribbles, only to be met with a quiet stare from everyone. Well, to be fair, I almost did take out the bomb and would have lost if I wasn't careful enough. Afraid you might have to come clean, Gohan, because you gotta admit, what we saw back there was already clear as day. Yeah... Hey, no worries, little bro. You just didn't want to make us look bad, right? Plus, we kind of been eavesdropping a little ourselves. Have any of you in this class honestly have no shame? Deceit and deception? What happened to trust? The class representative really expected better of his fellow peers. They were supposed to be a dignified unit for Pete's sake. No words can express the sheer disappointment in Ida's towering gaze of disapproval. For shame, I say. Sorry, Ida. Really? Koda approaches Gohan, putting two and two together. So, Gohan, does that mean... Yeah, sorry, Koda. I didn't remember that I was lying to you, too. Don't worry about it. It just means we'll all have to try harder during the festival. But make no mistake, you are the strongest, Gohan. And I'm still going to defeat you at your best. I second that. I believe we could all use some time training apart for the spirit of this competition. But, to keep things honorable, does anyone have anything else they'd like to share with the class? Tezui slowly raises her hand. Well, if we're gonna come clean then, Gohan? Uh-huh? You'll wanna sit down for this one. Sounds so serious. Oh, okay, okay, I'll sit down. You what? Meanwhile, just along the outskirts of UA's schoolyard, where one of Mr. Satan's employees had their limos parked to prepare for a festival, a strange and small figure had sneaked out for a vehicle, presumably a stowaway. Now it's time I finally see where you've been sneaking off to, Daddy. Stealing a peek from underneath the vehicle's rather very long hood, the child took a glimpse at the building in front of her. She was not going to lie, though. Whoever these guys were really had style. 
The building wasn't like anything she's ever seen before. Its uncanny size and structure was all too new to her, but that was not the time for distractions. She had a job to do, and she needed to get a move on. A device in her pocket started to beep, as it soon was picking up something. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's where you're heading. Excitedly jumping out from her hiding spot and onto the head of a limo, the figure revealed herself to be a young girl wearing a white gi, similar to the one that Mr. Satan had, as well as having the same level of subtlety. <sighs> as usual, here I go saving my dad's sorry butt again. Just leave it to Vidal to save the day! Feeling ever so confident with an early lead, she could already be spotted doing the signature Super Satan pose on top of the limo from a mile away. Well, aren't you just adorable? Are you lost, little girl? Hey! I'll have you know that I'm- Vidal turned around to find just a pair of clothes floating in the distance. This can only mean one thing. Ah! Body snatcher! Huh. That's a new one. Pretty sure she was gonna go with Ghost. Tarot checked off a list of names with a pen which ironically contained invisible ink. I really need to work on my handwriting. No wonder I still can't read this. That was almost a little too close for comfort. All the more reason for her to keep moving fast if she wanted to find her dad in time. Little did she know that a tracking app on her phone was heading towards downtown, the much more dangerous and less secure parts of the city. To think a more responsible secretary in question could have prevented said child to enter sanctuary depths of the unknown just had to have a poorly timed mid-afternoon coffee break when you should have been checking the vehicle, Joanna! You had, like, one job! Speaking of fancy doodads, it wasn't long before an expensive-looking helicopter came flying from outside the school's window, sporting a logo that Golhan was all too familiar with. He stepped outside with some of his classmates, and a door slid open to reveal... Bulma? What are you doing here? Well, we heard from Chi-Chi that there was going to be another tournament taking place here. Plus, it'd be great to finally catch up. Right, guys? Yeah, it's been a while. I can really go for some grub. Guys, these are my friends from back home. Mr. Piccolo, Bulma, and Krillin. So, this is what all that training on the lookout led up to. Another figure leapt down from Bulma's helicopter. And tension on. They're where I got most of those techniques. Let's hope we get to see them in action. As Goldhan had been really looking forward to seeing his mother again, unfortunately Bulma said that Chi Chi was still trying to collect her bearings after what had happened just a few weeks earlier. Everyone had spent the rest of the evening mingling with Goldhan's family friends. Krillin asked Midori and the others what Golhan has been up to this past year with them. Bulma and Yazirozu held Golhan hostage until they could give his costume a little bit more... mis Shoji was impressed by Tien's forearm technique. While meditating, Piccolo thought he heard something in the background. Something along the lines of Mina trying to push a mortified Tezui and force her to open up. Simply taking everything in and just being together with all his friends in one place felt like a much needed break for Gohan, after so much had been going on and what was to come for the festival ahead. That'll do it for part 9. One more to go. Be on the lookout for part 10 coming your way shortly after this. See ya!